from the Huntington Bank Studio. This is Colts 360. Colts are back from the bye week and Colts 360 is back as well, kicking things off this week with head coach Shane Steichen. Coach, after the guys got a week away, came back into the building on Monday, how do you describe the energy that they brought coming in? Great. Uh, they're all refreshed. You know, they got some time away uh, to, to relax and get their bodies right and their minds right uh, for this, you know, seven game stretch that we're about to uh, <laughs> come on. Sorry now. So. I know you had some work, some things that you were focused on here in the building, getting some things that you wanted to look into and spend some time on. We'll get into that, but also getting some family time in there as well. I know, though, for me, being at home on a Sunday felt kind of strange. Like I was kind of buzzing around, like feeling like I should be on a field somewhere. Were you able to kind of flip that switch off or were you somewhat paying attention to what, everything that was going on, especially with some of those AFC and divisional games going oh, on? I watched all the games on Sunday. I had the Sunday ticket on and watched every single one of them. I was flipping around, had a couple TV's on just seeing the difference you know watching situation of football around the league uh, seeing where teams are at uh, it was fun. One thing in particular that we have seen with quarterbacks of late you look at the injury to Joe Burrow Deshaun Watson in Cleveland and they end up starting a rookie last week they sign Joe Flacco as well and just the AFC quarterback picture in general I mean all the way back to the beginning of the season with what happened to Aaron Rodgers. Looking to your own situation with investing in Gardner Minshew, even prior to the decision to draft Anthony, how valuable has that decision played out to be? Uh, it's been huge to have Gardner here. Uh, has been awesome. He gives us a chance every single Sunday that he steps on the field along with the rest of our guys. Uh, but to have him here, to sign him, obviously before the season, yeah, like you said, you look around the league and all the injuries that have happened. I know it's been crazy this year. Uh, with the quarterback injuries, but uh, it's been great to have them. One of the things that you mentioned going into the bye week was spending some time on that self scout. What were the things that you were able to evaluate and spend some time looking at as you prepare for this next seven week stretch? Really just the things that we need to improve on. You kind of look around statistically where you're at uh, in the league, uh, the things you're good at, you know, making sure you're getting better at the things you're good at, but also the things that you need to improve on uh, were big for us. And, you know, we did a deep dive into that stuff uh, this past week. Uh, and feel that we came out with some answers. A couple of things that you want to improve on in particular when you look at the matchup at hand at home against Tampa Bay. Uh, the biggest thing for us, the biggest thing is we always talk about winning the turnover battle. I think that's going to be big. You know, we're plus one right now uh, in turnover differential uh, through 10 weeks. And I think if we can continue to rise that number week in and week out, it'll give us chances to continue to win. Tampa Bay, good team coming off a tough loss to San Francisco. I mean, the Niners have been a juggernaut for the majority of this season. But what in particular are the strengths that you've noticed of this Buccaneers team? You know, they're really good up front. Uh, they got a really good, you know, defensive line, obviously with their linebackers. White inside is a really good football player. Uh, you know, I got a ton of respect for Todd Bowles and what he does defensively. Uh, so it'll be a tough match for us coming up on Sunday, but one we're looking forward to. And you're coming off back-to-back -back wins. I mean, the momentum is high. What is the mes message to your team, not even looking in totality at the seven weeks ahead and with everything ahead of you, but in particular with this week, looking at getting back to at home and then the opportunity to go 3-0 and in the month of November. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is is focus on what you can control and be 1-0 this week, you know, and that's the biggest message is let's be great today, let's be great the next day and focus on that day at hand, the task at hand, the meetings, the practice and how we go about our business uh, and the rest will take care of itself. This has been an interesting stretch because you had the Germany traveled, you have the bye week, now you have Thanksgiving week. So one of those where you have a number of factors coming into play in addition to focusing on the task at hand week in and week out. What is for you best part of Thanksgiving and your first thing you look forward to with that Thanksgiving meal? Um, shoot, you know, it's all it's always awesome uh, football time around Thanksgiving, you know, the Thursday, you know, practice, you know, practicing on Thanksgiving morning and then, you know, in the afternoon, getting some time with your families and having those meals. Uh, I know my family will be in town, so it'll be fun to spend some time with them and eating that turkey and mashed potatoes and the sides and uh, my mom will make some pies, uh, but it'll be fun. But we're, we're, we're really looking forward to the game on Sunday. It's the first Midwest Thanksgiving for you, actually, and your family. Are you a tree up Christmas music on before Thanksgiving or you got to wait until that Friday after? No, that tree's already up. We already got it up. Now we don't have the ornaments on it, but the tree is up and the lights are on. Is now is that your initiation or is that the wife and kids? That's the wife, but I put it up. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, appreciate the time. Hey, we mentioned that Germany game. Want to take a look back at the highlights, a full recap from the Colts Germany experience, and of course, that most recent win over the New England Patriots. Come on, Germany! Come on, Germany! Yeah! That's fantastic. 
blessing to be here. You know we live in Germany. Guten Tag. Go Cards! Yeah. 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 Week 10 finds the Colts in Frankfurt, Germany. It is time for the Indianapolis Colts. For the shoe! And their fans to show up here in Germany. Oh, oh, let's go, go! Way across the front! We take this trip. Blues, let's go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. International buck. Time to get some international saccharoonies. And we are underway in Germany. And he is taken down by the Colts. He runs at the time. And they bring him down. That's Tayo Adangbo again. It's in trouble, and he goes down again. Dio Adangbo, it's his third sack of the game. A new career high in sacks for Dio Adangbo. Colts get him again. They get him again. And it's Tyron Lewis. And their pass rush is ferocious in Frankfurt. This crowd is going to be pretty raucous today. These guys are ready for some NFL. Fourth and goal. Here we go. Swatched into the end zone. The Colts, they're on top for the first time today. How cool is this, man? How cool is this? Let's go win. Colts lead by four. They need here 36. Field has a man who dies. A blocking of the ball. He fires the field. Yeah. Picked up by the Colts. Intercepted by Rodney Thomas. I love Germany. I love Germany. That's how you get in Germany. Hey. Worldwide wins. WWW. Hey, hey, hey. I told y'all, win travel. Eight hours on the flight, hurting to lose. Win. Big win. Now let's go home, get this bye week right, and get the second half rolling. I guess it's not really trying to replicate a game, it's just, you know, continue to work to get better and continue to try to help the team win. Coming up, fresh off that game-wrecking performance, Daiwa Dangbo sets sights on a seven-game stretch to keep momentum rolling. Next on Colts 360. Forte Sports Medicine and Orthopedics is proud to be the team physicians of the Indianapolis Colts. At Forte, fellowship trained physicians and staff provide comprehensive, specialized sports medicine and orthopedic care to active patients of all ages. To learn more, visit ForteOrtho.com. When the Colts score, the kids win. Meyer, the official super center of the Colts, and the Colts will donate $500 to Riley Children's Foundation for every Colts touchdown pass this season. For updates throughout the season and to learn more about how you can donate to Riley Children's Foundation, visit Colts.com slash Meyer. Joining me now in studio, fresh off not just the bye week, but also a career day against the Patriots, Dio Adangbo. Great to have you. Great to have you back in the building. How'd you enjoy your bye week? What'd you do? Oh, it was great. I mean, it was just nice to have some time off, catch up on sleep, you know, get the body right. What is something that you look forward to over the bye week in terms of kind of refreshing yourself, but also to some degree evaluating where you are now to this point in the season and those goals that you have in front of you? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's just a time to look back, you know, with the season. It's just week by week. You kind of just move on. So it's a time to look back and kind of look at your growth through the season, where you are and where you want to be at the end of the season and try to figure out how to get there. And a huge day from you, as we mentioned. Everybody saw the reaction. Worldwide wins. You know, getting the win, and then you having the three sacks against New England, not just in the game, but in the first half alone. The first Colt to have three sacks and a half since Dwight Freeney back in 2005. Were you aware of that stat? Yeah, I mean, I, after the game, I kind of heard it a couple of times. Yeah. How overwhelmed were you by the response that there was to your performance? Because we kind of saw it all over on social media. I think Brian Baldinger did a breakdown, especially with that game being the focal point of Sunday morning, everybody having eyes on the outcome of that game and especially of your performance. Yeah, I mean, it's always great to kind of feel some recognition from, you know, people in the business and your peers. So um, it was really cool. It was a really cool experience and be able to have, you know, family there to be able to see it. So it was fun. 
how much family did you have over there? Who was over there being able to watch? Because that's huge yeah. over there in Frankfurt and the atmosphere that there was. Yeah, my dad's brothers and then my brother um, and then, you know, the, all their kids. So a bunch of my cousins and my brother and uh, my uncles and aunts. So it was great. Always got to show out for the family. Know that for sure. And then how do you keep that momentum moving forward. How much can you replicate that type of performance? I know it's difficult to do week in and week out, but what are the aspects that you try to incorporate moving forward in the seventh game, seven game stretch? I mean, it's just getting back to the middle, you know, uh, coming back to the work, whether it's been good or bad, you just kind of get back to the middle and go back to, you know, where the work is done. So um, I guess it's not really trying to replicate a game. It's just, you know, continue to work to get better and continue to try to help the team win. And you have found so much consistency this season. I know we're pointing to that performance individually, but that's part of a much bigger picture. It's really been a breakout year for you in its entirety. How do you describe this journey for you, going back to that rookie season when you came in, drafted, coming off that Achilles injury, and then not able to play until very late in the season, almost treating that like a redshirt year, if you will? Yeah, I mean, it was tough early as far as just getting acclimated midseason and just kind of coming in and getting it all thrown at you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been good. I, I've, it's been a fun process. Obviously, it's had its ups and downs, but it's been a fun process, you know, just working to get to this point. And, you know, it's just part of the journey. I still have a long way to go to get where I want to go. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, you know, excited to have been able to have the opportunity and to continue to have opportunities. How challenging is it to come in with such high expectations for yourself? And also, you were one of those draft selections that this front office was so excited about. We had the guys in the draft room calling you Hurricane Dio. But to know you would have to kind of play the long game with it, and this was something that was going to be a process of maybe a two, three, four-year type of build at your position. Yeah, I mean, it just comes down to trying to find consistency and stay consistent in the work. Um, like you said, you know, you don't always see the results early that you want to see. Sometimes, you know, it takes time and it just takes continuous building and it's, it's still going to take continuous building to keep moving forward and, and eventually get to the point I want to be. It's been so fun to watch this defensive front grow together. You've had Defoe and Grover who've been up there playing at a high level for a long time. You have yourself. Quiddy, Samson, Eric Johnson has stepped up in huge moments. Taven has as well. How would you describe the dynamic that there is currently within your position group? Yeah, I mean, it's fun. I feel like everybody trusts each other. Everybody expects each other to, you know, make great plays and do their job. Um, we all push each other, each other to be better and kind of compete with each other to try to be the best. So um, it's been fun. It's, it's been the most exciting group I've been a part of since being in, in the league. So. Um, I'm just excited to see where we can go with these next seven weeks and, you know, kind of try to take it as far as we can and hopefully on into the postseason. And shout out not just to you guys, but to also defensive line coach Nate Ollie, who has done such a spectacular job with this group. All right, Thanksgiving is this week. What do you guys do? And I know you have practice and everything. What will you do with the afternoon? Hopefully get a little time to celebrate. Yeah, I have a little time off. So have some family in town, you know, the parents and, you know, my brother and, just have some uh, family in town, eat some good food, uh, get some good turkey, some dessert, you know. Hey, the family was in town in Germany, worked out well. Hopefully that works out well again back at home against Tampa Bay. Favorite part of Thanksgiving meal for you? Uh, dressing. I like dressing, so that would be my favorite part. We were talking with Coach about that as well. Okay, last thing, very controversial uh, topic to debate right now. Do you put up the Christmas tree? before or after Thanksgiving? Do you start listening to the Christmas music before or after Thanksgiving? Uh, it should be the weekend after Thanksgiving. So that weekend, that's part of Thanksgiving is you get the food on Thursday and then like Friday, Saturday, you start bringing out the Christmas decorations. And you crank up the music while you're putting up the Bring decor the and all of that. Yeah. I'm I'm with you, my friend. I appreciate that. I appreciate you so much. Continue having an outstanding season. Looking forward to seeing you out there this Sunday back at Lucas Oil Stadium. And many of the Colts players spent this week giving back to the community in honor of Thanksgiving. Take a look at the annual Horseshoe Helpings giveaway earlier this week down at Lucas Oil Stadium. We're helping distribute meals to the Indiana community, you know, helping out with the holiday season. The holidays are a time for everybody to be together, you know, for families to come, have fun, everybody to lift their spirits and just, you know, enjoy enjoy life and stuff like that. So I feel like it's really important for, you know, to try to get everybody that opportunity. It's a really important time for not only development, but, you know, just people going throughout the day to day and especially with, you know, things going on in the world. Everybody needs a little bit more joy. So. It's always important to give back, especially during this time, and just help out and like provide for that.
Cam, what's up, bro? I like the hair. The hair lasted for like a week. You wore socks. I like the rings. Am I? Ooh. And still ahead, rating the freshest game day fits with Kenny Moore the second and Julian Blackman. That's next on Colts 360. This season, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield is teaming up with the Colts to shine a light on outstanding small businesses. Indy is our hometown, and boosting local business is just one way we want to thank this great city. Go to Colts.com slash Anthem Spotlight to nominate your favorite small business today. Anthem and the Colts, helping Hoosier small businesses score. It's time for the Forum Credit Union Question of the Week. Who holds the all-time scoring record for the Indianapolis Colts? Kicker Adam Vinatieri with 1,515 points. Vinny played 14 seasons with the Colts from 2006 to 2019. Visit the Forum Credit Union Fan Forum section of Colts.com to interact with other fans online. Forum Credit Union, helping members live their financial dreams. Aside from the game itself, players have made a rival style one of the most anticipated events of the entire game day experience. So, we recruited our own in-house style gurus, Kenny Moore II and Julian Blackman, to critique and rate their teammates' arrival fits in a segment that we are calling Arrival of the Fittest. Someone will have a one on this team. He do got he the chest out. I'm probably the freshest guy in the Midwest. What about the shoes? I just need some socks. You need socks? <laughs> <laughs> and this is being generous. Who clothes he wearing? You know my thing with the socks? He's fitted. Most of the time I'm thinking, okay, what can I wear that, you know, is within my style. I like to have a lot of options, so I, I have a stylist and uh, she'll send me just a bunch of things like this is what I'm thinking. I want to do something a little flashy but humble. I don't want to be too stand out-ish. I don't want to be too like, hey, look at me. I value looking good. <laughs> Why did I know he was going to be first? <laughs> it's a little different having the, the New York Yankees on his shirt, but he has a, what is that, Oakland A's? That's, that's uh, a good on. point. What team it's like wearing for? Nike and Adidas at the same time. <laughs> Whose team are you on, Speed? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I give Speed. I want a little bit more. If we're coming to the game, I want a little bit more. You gotta be tip top. <laughs> hey. hey, this is my dog, though. This is my dog. This is really new to Indy, so like, I, I, like I haven't really seen these shirts pre-game like this. This is me. I feel like he put some thought behind he it. He did, he did. <laughs> Cam, what's up, bro? I like the hair. The hair lasted for like a week. You wore socks. I like the rings. Am I? Ooh. Who clothes you wearing? <laughs> there's nothing in his bag. I promise you, there's nothing in Isaiah McKenzie's bag right here. I really just like drawing on this thing. Mm -hmm. That's a bold fit. I don't think he needs a suitcase at the home game. Yeah, that was one thing I let you just handle because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I'm actually asking him, like, why do you take like, a suitcase? That in? I would just say, if you're going to wear the hat, put it on. Strangely enough, I feel like Samson pulls this off. Let's see. A nine. That's, I like that fit. I like that one. I wouldn't wear it because I'm not buff enough for all that. This is this is definitely buff. Yeah. Cross necklace, wedding ring, suit, silk suit. I like the inside of it too. For sure. Oh. We close. Buckaroo. Wow. That's what I call buck. He's fitted. Teaching moment for a lot of guys. Mm -hmm. When you travel, this is something I had to learn too. You gotta get a garment bag. He can then fold the suit up and he can carry it like a bag. So a lot of guys don't know how to pack suits. I did not know that. Learn out the book. It's a good one out the book.
Thanks for spending part of your Thanksgiving holiday weekend here with us. Colts 360 will be back in studio next week with an all new episode. And the Colts are back at Lucas Oil Stadium to face Tampa Bay Sunday, 1 o'clock kickoff. In the meantime, stay up to date with all the latest Colts news and updates on Colts.com, the Colts app, and of course, all the social platforms. And download the official Colts podcast available anywhere you get your podcasts. Here is a preview of the latest on this week's episode. You know this young man, you've known him since day one on here. You got to know his family, the impact that he has on the field and off the field. The Colts have officially released linebacker Shaq Leonard. And really a tough day because we were joking before that we started recording on. It's not joking is, Lara, this is tough because this is a gentleman that you work with and I cover, but at the same time, this is a buddy. This is a family friend. It truly is. And we've had many very candid, heartfelt conversations over the last few years with everything that Shaq has been through because I covered his rookie season uh, before I was part of the organization when I was working at the local affiliate and part of the beat and then coming in since 2019 have always had a very strong connection uh, with with Shaq and just learning about his story and we have spent so much time talking about that story and, and sharing that story and I remember going into training camp when we sat down with him for Behind the Colts to hear from him on what that entire offseason had looked like for him to try to get back to being on the field after the multiple surgeries and setbacks and everything that he's endured both physically and then mentally and emotionally as well. And he so openly discussed what those weeks would look like during the offseason after he left from minicamp and when he would fly from Lakeview, South Carolina to Tampa to get specialized treatment and train and rehab down there over the course of the week and then fly back to spend the weekends with his two daughters and his wife, Kayla. And Kayla has been, you know, his high school sweetheart. They have been through everything together. She is totally his rock. And he talked about how much he leaned on her. But he also told me these he was working with this special neurologist for the issues that he was having and all of the needles. I mean, daily, it was 75 to 100 needles Oof. daily for some of these procedures that he was enduring simply to try to return to football and play at a high level. 